On behalf of Edward Don and company and the Hody Group, uh, we'd like to thank you for your time and attention today. Thanks for taking time out of your busy calendars and joining us for yet another uh, HDI product focus uh, specifically for the C-Store operator and community. I'm your host, John D. Uh, I'm with the Hody Group and I'm one of the senior business development directors in sales and marketing. So we've got a great lineup for you today, several topics to include a concept and solution for realizing huge potential savings of dollars in garbage bags. I just said garbage bags. And this is all on your Jansan side of your operation. Wait till you see this program, it's fantastic. A food labeling system that's completely automated and networked for all of your food, snacks, and grab and go in your stores and is a very user-friendly platform, simple. Also, we're gonna highlight a carry-out packaging solution to start your grab-and-go program or increase your grab-and-go bundle, which will aid in growing your ticket sales at your register and getting your customers to come back for more. Last but not least, we're gonna to introduce to you a new cutlery dispenser concept that is so sanitary, compact, and affordable this is a definite deliver uh, or a definite solution to deliver savings to you as the operator. It's going to help reduce your waste in pulling multiple when your customers pull multiple utensils at a time. It's going to give your customers also in the environment we're in today tremendous peace of mind knowing that um, this is a great system for cross contamination of germs or the elimination of those germs. So I'd like to take a moment recognize a few folks. And uh, those of us uh, that will be with us through the whole presentation, I'm glad for that. And also those responsible for inviting you all uh, to our event along with their team. Uh, so we're joined today by Edward Don, North Florida, Atlanta Regions District Sales Manager, Sarah Carpenter, and Tennessee and Atlanta Regions District Sales Manager, Scott Lachelle. Sarah and Scott, thanks so much uh, for being here. And Don, sponsoring this event, welcome. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. You're welcome. We're also joined today with my colleague uh, at the Hody Group, Senior Business Development Director, extraordinaire of sales and marketing, Melissa Marguerite. Melissa is a 30-year industry professional in culinary food service and hospitality space. And we at the Hody Group have been bringing manufacturers to market for over 40 plus years in disposables like Jansan Solutions, packaging, and disposables. Also assisting us today, who gave you the housekeeping information, is Nick D. He's a business development director of sales and marketing with Hody Group. Nick is also our mission control admin today for our presentation, and we'll be offering also some commentary on our topics presented as well. Nick, thanks, and thanks for all you do, bud. Appreciate it. Not a problem. So I'd like to turn your attention to this quick company overview of Edward Don, which we hope will give you a better feel for who Edward Don is and what value they bring to our industry. So let's watch it right here. The basic premise of Edward Don and Company is that we're customer focused. It's a family business started in 1921 by my grandfather. Hi, I'm Steve Don, CEO and president of Edward Don and Company. Don is a family owned company and you do see and feel aspects of that. We're third generation, been in business 96 years. We're not focused on the short term gain, it's a long term play. While the ownership has a lot to do with that, it also is the people. We're a collaborative group of people and we care about the business, we care about the customer customer experience. You know, it's 365 days a year, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. We'll get you what you need when you need it. For us, you know, it's really important to do research and stay on top of the trends and talk to our suppliers about what they see coming down the line. Usually they know before we do. When you're at restaurants and you see the Don brand and you see the Don trucks going out, it makes you feel good that, hey, wait, I deliver that. The fact that we have six distribution centers, we're all on the same operating platform. It's all the same products coming out of the buildings, the consistency, you know, there's mistakes in this business. Customers forget to order something and it's a Friday night and they need something, we take care of them. The easiest thing to do is say no to somebody. We try to find a way to make something work. Whatever that something is, it's all about really just helping the customer out and servicing them. There's very few companies that can do what we do. When you look at 
large national companies who are all on a single operating platform and fully integrated our stocking breadth and the mix of products that we have. That list is maybe one, maybe just us. Utilizing the best people, the best service, the best products, and the best technology. It's our responsibility to educate our sales reps so they can educate the customers and to provide them with the products that will help them to do that. And once you come on and bond with us and we partner together, we don't lose very many customers. We have a supportive culture. We look to promote from within. We have a lot of talent here and you want to be able to grow those people. The people on national accounts, our FED, contract division, crews international. We really really are a large company that operates as a family. I know everybody's like kids' names and pets' names. I know when they're buying a house or a car. I mean, everybody just kind of knows where you went on vacation. It's really a makeup of 1,100 people showing up every day with a common mission and a common goal. Steve is really passionate about the direction he wants this, this company to go and the way to get there. He knows that what differentiates Edward Don from everybody else is that family personal touch. You have an opportunity to come here every day and work for an industry leader with great leadership, do work you care about, work with people that you care about. I think it's a home run in any language, right? I really want to see us continue to grow and prosper as we have so far, and really the future is wide open for us. I'm passionate for the success of this business so that those employees that started last week or will start next week kind of have that same opportunity to spend uh, a lengthy career with, I think, the greatest company in our industry. For me, it's a little bit different. My name's on the door. My goal was to nurture the business and make it better for the next generation. If our customers are successful, long-term we will be successful. So Sarah, great video, and uh, just want to say, give a shout out to Edward Don. So proud to work with all of you. You guys are an absolute pleasure uh, to work with. We've had a long tenure of seven years working together side by side. Um, Sarah, as, as our operators are listening today, um, and this is a C-Store operator community, they're probably saying to themselves, okay, great video. So Sarah, why Edward Don? Why Don for the C-Store operator? Um, thanks, John. Edward Don and Company is dedicated to the ongoing success of your business and takes the responsibility of providing you with outstanding resources and products very seriously. Leadership is about more than simple numbers, though. It's about understanding what's important to you and working hard every day to earn and maintain your trust so you can have the peace of mind you need to focus on your business. Every operator wants to minimize risk, increase profits, improve efficiencies, provide a great experience, and use the products they can trust. Don is proud to bring you our SPEED commitment as part of our ongoing dedication to your success. SPEED stands for safety, profitability, efficiency, experience, and Don, and that is our commitment to you. Excellent. Yeah, Sarah, I, you know, I, again, we've worked together. Um, we really have made some great inroads together and the value that I see in my industry, in the position that I sit in, Don does deliver. And, and, I, and I thank you for that. And you guys are an incredible team. You're professionals, you're pros at what you do, and you get it done. So, all right, let's jump right into our first segment. Uh, this of the uh, Don C-Store HGI product focus. And this is a segment of how to save real money with the SureFit trash can liner system and how we can move the needle in your operational savings in one of the most commonly overlooked categories in Jansan. Yes, garbage bags. We're gonna stop telling you or showing you how to stop wasting plastic, money, and time by implementing a simple saving solution, the Edward Don SureFit can liner system. Again, yes, these are garbage bags. However, the bigger your operation, and you see store operators know this, the more savings impact we can have, and all you need to do is reduce plastic. Did you know you buy your liners like you buy meat by the pound? So if you reduce plastic, that equals uh, reducing your case weight and that equals savings. So hopefully you as the operator, if we can show you some found savings, uh, and I don't know an operator that doesn't like saving money right now, um, you can redirect those dollars right to your bottom line, reinvest it, do something with it, grow your ticket sales at your register, but don't throw your money away literally in the trash. So uh, we've got Melissa Marguerite. I've introduced her a little while ago. She's going to be with me on this segment. Um, Melissa, again, is a 30-year industry professional. 
She's worked with liners and waste management for that many years. She doesn't, I know if she look at her, this looks like she's been in business for only five years. Look at her, she looks fantastic. But uh, Melissa, I always wanna give a shout out to Melissa and a big thanks. Melissa's taught me everything I know today about waste management in this Edward Don Surefit system. And I just wanna thank you, Melissa, for assisting me in running shotgun with me on this presentation. Thank you. Sure, happy. Um, Thank you, Melissa. Uh, also, we've got Nick, uh, Nick D, who's gonna, he also works with uh, Hody Southeast with me in the market for Edward Don. Nick's a business development director with the Hody Group, covers the state of Florida. Uh, again, thanks Nick for being with us and assisting us uh, again and uh, supporting us on the segment, appreciate it. Of course, happy to be here. Thanks buddy. So Scott Lachelle, I uh, introduced Scott a little while ago. Scott's the Tennessee and Atlanta region's uh, district sales manager for Edward Don. So Scott, a uh, while back, you uh, gave me a, a ring and said, hey, I came across this short article recently. Wait till you see this in August of 2020, Sea store News. And when you sent it to me and I looked at it, and, which was under the small operator section, and it was a suggestion or reference inside that magazine. And I'm sure this is just everybody's in this is the industry rag you guys read was how to identify savings on your P&L of how to look at your trash and, and suggesting look at your trash can liners and their number of pulls that you make. I was so excited to see that because that's exactly what we preach all the time. So, Scott, would you like to take a moment and just share a little bit or comment on that? Absolutely. Thanks, John. Um, it just, it, I get the sea store news just so I can keep up to speed with what's going on in that industry. And it's, it's really an educational tool for us. Um, that article is actually called financial management 101. So it's just basic, basic opportunities for sea store managers and operators to, um, to put dollars back in their bottom line and to, to manage what their, what their operations are doing. So this just kind of left off the page of me because I thought, well, that's exactly what we do. That's, you know, when we're talking about trash can liners and, and reducing the size of the can and, you know, redu and actually using the correct liner to help you, you know, reduce the, the, the number of dollars that you're putting into a landfill and being able to redirect that to other areas of your of your operation that's just a key benefit to what we do and i, I it just it was really exciting for me to see that yeah I, w I was really happy to see that and read it and just glad that that um you know some of the their industry peers and the industry peers are bringing this up as to how to save you know you know save your money 101 and so um this is what we're going to discuss uh, here for the next 15 or 20 minutes about uh, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. It uh, once people find out about this, it's widely popular. Um, but um, again, it's one of those things that we keep in our back pocket when we consult with the C store operator. It's the first thing we usually bring out because we're looking to find savings pretty quick. So I'd like to turn your attention to this quick promo video of the SureFit Canliner system, uh, which we hope will give you a better idea of what SureFit is and what value it can bring to your operation. Let's watch it right here. Meet Joe is the owner of Never Hungry Cafe. Joe's cafes are doing quite well, but his operating costs continue to rise, and he tries to save money when and where he can. Joe meets with his Edward Don rep, Shirley Kent. Shirley loves working with her customers and is committed to helping them control their costs and save money in their day-to-day -day operation. While touring Joe's property, Shirley notices that Joe is currently using 23-gallon Slim Jim trash cans and the trash bags inside them are too big. Joe tells Shirley that he is currently buying a 60-gallon trash bag and Shirley knows that a 60-gallon bag in a 23-gallon can represents 70% waste. Shirley looks at Joe and tells him that she just found him some money. Shirley grabs a notepad and sketches out some basic math showing Joe's current spend. Let's take a closer look. Joe is currently buying 10 cases per month for six locations. Joe is paying $26.40 a case for a 60 gallon, 38 by 58, 1.2 mil trash bag. That's 720 cases a year for all six locations. That adds up to $19,000 per year in trash bags. After hearing this, Joe is furious. Shirley looks at Joe and says, no worries, Joe, I have what you need. 
Shirley begins to spin and transforms into Shirley Shorefit, the super savings hero. Shirley introduces Joe to the Edward Don Shorefit trash bag system and tells Joe to stop wasting plastic, money, and time and start using the right size bags for his trash cans. Shirley now demonstrates for Joe the perfect customized fit and size of the Surefit trash bag for his 23 gallon trash can. Joe is utterly amazed because he had no idea the Surefit system existed. Shirley grabs her notepad and shows Joe the new and improved savings using Surefit trash bags. 10 cases per month at six locations is 60 cases. The new 23 gallon Surefit bag is now $19.20 per case. In total, that's 720 cases a year for all six locations. Joe is spending about $19,000 per year with the 60-gallon bag. With SureFit and the right bag, Joe would now spend under $14,000 per year. That's a savings of more than $5,000. Joe is so amazed with the savings Shirley has shown that he places his order with Shirley for his new SureFit trash bags immediately. Stop wasting plastic, money, and time. You too can experience the same savings for your operation. Edward Don Sure Fit Trash Bags. Be sure, be fit, be economical. For more information, call 800 777 4DON or visit Don.com. All right, for the sake of the clock, we got to jump right in. So, Melissa, let's dive right into the Edward Don Surefit can liner system and let's talk some trash. So, uh, it's amazing how much impact we can have with operators. So, Melissa, our operators listening right now, can you basically help them understand, basically help them understand, you know, what is the Edward Don Surefit can liner system, the benefit to the operator, their operation in the industry? Sure. Thanks, John. Happy to be here. 30 years. Wow. Feels like it was yesterday. You don't look it. Oh, so, many, many years ago, um, I sat down with Edward Don and decided to uh, develop a system with them that we felt um, the system was broken with can liners. So we designed the SureFit system. And we recognized that there was an opportunity uh, to save the operators money. So the broken system is, is that uh, the top most popular bags out there, the 38 by 58 and the, and the 40 by 46 were designed to fit steel drums. Mm -hmm. And those steel drums are 60 gallon, 40, 45 gallon. I don't know about you, but I haven't seen one of those in years and years and years. They're out so there a little bit. They're not there nice, anymore. Nice and common. so what we have is we have bags that are out there that are uh, the top most selling bags out there going into cans that are now a 23 gallon Slim Jim, a 32 gallon brute and those are the most popular sizes out there and what we have is we have bags that are much much too big as Nick is showing right now uh, 38 by 58 going into a uh, uh, Slim Jim as Shirley talked about in the video that we showed is 70% too much bag for that can so Nick's going to show you how that bag uh, is way too wide it's way too long it's just so much plastic so after Nick, and then he's going to put it in this big giant knot, and that knot is just represents cost. That's just extra plastic that's unnecessary. So Nick is going to then show you, um, if possible, if not, uh, the Slim Jim liner that we designed to fit the Slim Jim can. So what we have now is a bag that fits the can like a glove. It has the correct overhang and uh, it has a six to eight inch overhang, which still allows for plenty of bag to tie off. It fits tight around the rim as Nick is showing and goes all the way to the bottom. So you're not gonna have the bag fall inside the can. Right. So why does this all matter to the operator? Why, why, what is the benefit? The benefit to the operator is we have bags that fit the cans properly, correct? So they're still gonna function exactly as we need them to function. But what we've done is we've eliminated a lot of extra plastic. 
And that extra plastic represents cost. That's so right. if I sell you a smaller bag that weighs less, my case weight's gonna weigh less, therefore the cost of that case is gonna be less. So it, 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 the, significant, the savings can be so significant, it, and we'll talk about, we'll show some examples in a later, later uh, offerings, but it's, that's why we designed this system was to um, save money for the operator. So Melissa, what, what's, the first, what's the first thing the operator should, should look at to implement this CanLiner system and savings solution? Where, where should they start? They should start by looking at their trash cans. So really, yeah. so that's the first step. It's easy to do. Um, obviously, the Slim Jim that Nick just showed us is an easy one to identify. You, and Absolutely. we see a lot, a lot of Slim Jims, and that's Edward Don's top selling garbage can um, because you don't have so much weight in it when they take the bag out. But then we also have 32 brutes and 44 gallon brutes. And, and we're showing the Slim Jims right there with the extra overhang and the extra knots. So we identify the cans and the 32 gallon brute and the 44 gallon brute look a lot alike. Even I, after doing this for multiple years, uh, still sometimes can't tell the difference between the two. So if you look at the rim around the can, if you lift up the bag, most of the time it's embossed on the rim and right. it'll say what size can it is. And if you can't find it that way, it's easy to just Google what are the dimensions of a 32 and a 44. So once you've identified the cans, Nick's going to show us yeah. on the rim of the can right there is what the uh, gallon capacity is of that can. So thanks, Nick. So once we've identified, um, now we need to figure out the sure fit, which sure fit bag fits in those cans. So we recognize that uh, bag needs vary for customers, whether it's front of the house or back of the house, Correct. whether it's hotel hospitality, whether it's outdoor use. So we design sure fit in, in two different types of plastic, high density and low density, which we'll talk about later. We also do uh, clear or opaque black. And then we also um, do different thicknesses because again, you know, one bag doesn't work for everyone, but we designed it in all sorts of different uh, options for the customer. Absolutely. And Absolutely. So, and most of the times we recommend, recommend two size bags because we'll see a lot of the times Slim Jims throughout the whole kitchen or throughout the whole operation. And then we'll see um, a large bag, large cans out by the gas pumps. Mm -hmm. We might see large cans out by the dock. We might see it by the dish sink, depending on what the operator is doing. So two bags would maximize the savings. One bag, we can save money, but it won't be as much as going to two bags. And, and most of the time I have, I have done, uh, we call it a waste audit. You're going to hear us use the word waste audit. Where should we start? You know, if you, you as the operator want to bring us in, the first thing our team's going to do is do an audit of your property, all of your cans, how you process your waste, uh, the number of pulls that you make. And, and mo most of the time I get, well, John D, I've reduced the size of my can. So that means I'm going to pull it more. Let's be honest. Your employees really shouldn't be lifting more than 40 or 50 pounds at a time. Uh, the can is going to get pulled regardless of how heavy it is because you're probably on a clock and they're going to pull six times uh, a, a day. Sometimes more, sometimes less. And we know uh, gas pumps, you'll find any, everything more than you'd ever want to find at gas pumps, including all the bad stuff too. So it's amazing uh, how much trash they can put in those cans. Therefore, we don't want the trash to overflow, so we do more frequent pulls. And I'm telling you, it becomes a law of, or it's, it's really an equation of economics at that point in simple math uh, to reduce the amount of price you pay per liner. And we like, to, we like to sell them to you on the each and not by the case, because I want to know how much you're spending per liner. It, it really adds up. So uh, Melissa, what, you know, what's the biggest, most commonly found mistake most operators make when it comes to their trash liners? The size matter? Size does matter. So it's the one size fits all mentality. So that's why the all 38 time. by 58 is the most popular bag out there because it fits every can, but doesn't really fit any can, any can properly. It was, remember when I said it was designed to fit those steel drums? Right. So it really is too big for most of the cans and actually too small for the 55 gallon can. Um, so what we have is a bag that's much too big. Again, we go back to why that bag being too big. 
therefore the costs are just going to be higher. So if we get you in a bag that fits the can, yep. that's what it means to the operator is we're going to save you money. So the, so the concept is if I can, you, you know, we talked about a waste audit. And, and again, when you're looking at your pumps, the cans at your pumps, they're never really over a 44 gallon size SureFit liner. So everybody puts a 60 gallon in there. That still represents waste. And they like to use one or two liners. So if we can get you down to a 44 and then find you most all the stores have their 20 to 23 gallon inside the stores and your bathrooms either have slim gyms in them or small six, uh, 12 to 16 gallon cans. And I'll tell you, we're going to show you a way of how we can help you save money. Again, reducing that plastic. But here's the concept I want to share with you. And if you don't remember anything else today, remember this. If, you know, when I work with an operator, I usually say to them, look, if I can save you $1,000 at your store right now, would you spend $300? And 99.999% of the time, they're going to say, well, yeah, because you're still up $700. And, and if you really look at your space, and, the, and it gets a little funky at the, at the gas pumps because you have these beautiful, expensive, gorgeous looking cans. I get excited when I walk up and see the cans and look inside and there's 32 gallon inserts in them. I get really excited over that. And some of your competitors do have those and not the 44s or you go in the back of the kitchen and they got this big 44 gallon when the rest of everything else is 32. You should have 32s in the back of the house, out front by the, by the pumps should be 32s. But here's the concept. If, if you know, would you spend $1,000 if you could save 300? Yes. Switch the cans out, spend $300 on 10 cans at $30 a piece. Nick was showing you a great Don Carlisle branded can. I'm, I'm not against the other manufacturers, but Don branded cans, that Carlisle can fits our system perfectly and they're fantastic. So again, you shouldn't be worrying about buying bigger bags. You should be reducing your can size. When you reduce your can size down, it requires a, a, a smaller bag, which equals savings to your bottom line. So, um, Melissa, for the sake of time, I think we really need to get right into some case studies. Okay. So, um, Nick, how, before we do that, can you share an example on the can reduction strategy that we all talk to our operators about all the time? Uh, something you did with an Ever Don account recently in, in, the, in the Florida market. Absolutely. I'll jump right in and uh, we'll go through this pretty fast. So what I'm showing you guys is a couple images that I took from a audit of a hotel property in central Florida. And the first thing we do when we come on property with our Edward Don rep is we look at the cans that you're using uh, as our customer. We need to know and familiarize ourselves so that we can take measurements, we can size the cans properly with the liner kits that we have, and we can determine what the biggest bag is on the property, as John and Melissa were, Melissa were saying. So you have a 32 gallon here and a 32 gallon. These are all outside by the pool. And then I might start making my way inside in, in the lobby area of the, of the hotel. We have another 32. Now I've found a 44. Well, I think I've found my biggest can. When lo and behold, right by the dish pit, we have a 55 gallon uh, round container. Now, knowing that it's a 55 gallon container, I already know that we have sh a sure fit liner for that. However, the most consistent and um, uh, most consistent and the most popular can that they were using was a 32 gallon. So in my mind as a rep and as a uh, uh, working with the Edward Don folks, I want to present savings, knowing that you could do your job properly with a 32 gallon and knowing that the staff We'll have no issues lifting that can. So going in the back of the house and in the stock room, I noticed it's a 38 by 58. It is a true 1.7 mil liner. And okay, so now I've got all my information. Now I go talk to the operator, you as my customer. Um, I educate them on what they're using. And I propose, as John was saying, a can reduction solution. Now, what does that look like? Well, we know that, as I mentioned, 32 gallon is a very popular can size. So that's what I'm gonna propose. And as I'm talking to the operator, a visiting chef from the New York City area from a very prominent restaurant comes up and wheels a 32 gallon cart that was in the kitchen. I just didn't show it to you guys, but wheeled it out on a dolly. She herself, not one of the staff people or one of the bus boys or one of the other attendants is physically lifting this bag out of the can, pulling it and throwing it in the dumpster herself. 
the food and beverage manager said, so-and-so, what do you think about moving to all 32 gallon cans? She said, I think that's a great idea because I know that I can lift a 32 and a 23 gallon Slim Jim with no issues whatsoever. Um, and in doing that, she will save her back, she will save time, she will save money. And the operator says, hmm, I think this is a great thing. Then she adds in, when we were working in New York City, I was recently audited and our business was audited in the restaurant I was working with because the trash was too heavy. So they were audited by OSHA for having excessive weight in their cans. And uh, so it's a real thing. So in yeah. saying that, I proposed a 32 gallon can this is what we ended up coming up with, which is one of our 104.1936 is a true 1.5 mil, great strong bag. And the operator tested it, loved it. And uh, we have that business now. So, and we've actually convinced them to take those 44s and those 55s, uh, move them to the back area of their operation. And in the event they need them, we will sell you a couple of random cases of those liners and you can keep them for special events. So Correct. that was a really, really exciting win for us. Great job. Thanks, Nick. Uh, Melissa, can we talk real quick about the difference between high D versus low linear density? Um, at C stores, typically, the, the lot of the properties that I have found, you know, east of the, uh, east of the uh, Mississippi River, all the way from New York down at the Keys of Florida, you find these operators using high density uh, liners versus low. Can you give us a quick exp explanation on that? Sure, sure. High density and low density. Um, high density does not have a lot of stretch. It's, um, it's very stiff product. It's, it's more resistant to puncture, which is probably why the C stores are using it. Nick is demoing it right now. He'll show that there's really no st stretch to that product. It's more of a crinkly plastic. Uh, we call it high density, high noise. Um, so to use that in the trash cans out by the gas pump, they, I'm sure they see tons of trash of all different types and sizes, but the nature of that product is when it splits, it zippers as Nick is showing. So it's resistant to puncture, but it will split. But the thing about high density and why so many people choose it is because of costs. Yep. We can manufacture it thinner and therefore it costs less. So that is a reason why it's in use a lot. Low density, which Nick is gonna show is oftentimes a heavier material, it has stretch to it. And once it punctures, the hole doesn't split wide open like we showed you with high density. So um, great for back of the house and kitchens, um, even great for the gas pumps, but then that hole's not gonna get any bigger that Nick is showing. It, and, yes. and I believe that Nick is, Excuse me, Melissa, I didn't mean to step on you. I believe Nick is actually showing a, a, a one mil or a 1.3 mil bag right there too. So you can see how durable that is. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be more expensive, but the reason why we see a lot of high D out there is um, it, it generally can hold a lot of that trash that we see at the gas pumps and in C stores, because a lot of it is yep. paper trash and empty containers, et cetera, not a lot of sharp objects. So the, the C, that, that high density will work. And, and in C, a lot of cost savings. Right, and in C stores, you can use the high density inside because it's paper and usually some coffee and liquids and whatnot, it holds up well. Outside, there's anything in the kitchen sink in the gas pump cans, uh, but that's okay. Operators listening, if you would allow us to do a waste audit on your property within your global footprint, I promise you, we get very excited because we're coming in hunting for dollars. And when we find those dollars, we, we, we're gonna let you know and uh, give us an opportunity to do that. Melissa, let's talk about a couple case studies so we can really give, and we'll get our Edward Don folks in on this. We gotta wrap this segment up in the next seven minutes or so. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, we just love to geek out about liners. I know I've been yeah. doing this so long, but it's, well, like, I, it's so exciting when I go in and see an opportunity to save an operator a lot of money of something that they're just throwing away. So um, one of the accounts that uh, we, we had a Glory Cafe, which was a, uh, a large restaurant chain, and Nick's going to share the details of this. Um, go through it really quick. They had 20 locations. They were buying that 38 by 60, that 60 gallon bag, um, and putting it into Slim Jims and 32 gallon brutes. We identified that really quickly. So they were paying over $30 a case. 
Um, their usage was 160 cases a month and they were spending about $58,000 a year. They shared the information with me because I explained to them how we would be able to save them money. So Nick, if you could scroll down. Um, so what we did is we looked, they were, they were adamant about one bag. So they had the Slim Jims and the 32s. So we came up with a bag that would fit the 32 gallon, approximately the same thickness in high density. And it would be a little big for the Slim Jim, but it would still save them tons of money. And you can see from uh, the math here that we went from them spending uh, 50 some thousand dollars a year to $36,000, a 22,000 savings cost just by simply going to a smaller bag. So you can see when I say we geek out about this because we're we so do. excited to show we the do. customer savings on something like this. It's just uh, so exciting for us. Then the customer has more money to spend on things that they really need or want. So that's a great example of one that we were able to save money. Absolutely. Another, another one really quick is just a very large casino that I was able to save them $30,000 a year. And the nice. reason why I bring this up is that we not only save them on costs, but we also save them, uh, they wanted to be more green. So we sold them our SureFit recycled content liners, which are third party certified green. But we also, by selling them a smaller bag, we reduced their carbon footprint, footprint by the amount of trash they were putting in the landfill. They were putting less plastic in the landfill by going to smaller bags. So those are two great examples of some things that we can do with SureFit. And, and, and those listening, please take this serious. I know it's the brain doesn't go to trash. We just, it's like, you know, it's a necessary evil. I got to have it. I know it's part of my operational expense. Trust me, there's money in your trash. Better you reinvest it and do something with it than throw it away in the landfill. So I um, want to give you another example of a very large Southeast Sea store chain that we worked with, did a skew reduction took them from nine SKUs down to three uh, and opened a lot of, maybe a lot of warehouse space for them as well from what I understand. And we realized and helped them under, uh, realize over $200,000 of savings by this operator. Sarah was with me on this, huge impact. Sarah, would you please just comment? Absolutely. Um, you know, working with the Hody Group and Barry uh, Plastics is an awesome opportunity to show you cost savings. Um, you know, in this particular um, company, we presented a solution to reduce the cost through SKE rationalization. Um, it was really easy. Uh, John helped with the in-store audits as well as my rep, Mike Schuller, um, to determine the proper usage. Um, they were currently, like John said, using nine SKEs. Once we determined uh, and did the audit walkthrough, we determined they only needed three. Um, we presented these findings to their corporate office, scheduled trials with samples to determine their usage and cost savings, um, and then worked hard training the staff on proper use and the importance of it. Um, in fact, you know, my contact, and a little side note, at Sea Store Decisions reports that, um, you know, changing possibly to a plastic liner um, can prevent loss by 10% as well. So that's another cost savings alone. Perfect. Um, you know, we overall produced annualized savings, like John said, it, uh, it's about $200,000. To, that's real to money. Their bottom line. That's real money. Yep. And in fact, uh, that was just liners alone. And I'm going to give you another case example where we both did the disposable gloves because I don't know why C stores always buy the most expensive glove on the market. Gloves is, uh, is a subject we want to stay away from right now, given our environment. But you couple the the glove savings and liner savings for an operator. That I call that the one one two punch knockout. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again. Give us an opportunity to, to, to let us into your space. Let us do an audit for you. Let us give you our findings. And I think we're going to show you we can hopefully find you some money. And if we can't, we'll tell you that. So, Scott, uh, you and I worked on another mid-sized C-Store opportunity. We realized for the operator by using a can reduction strategy and reducing pl plastic, we saved them over $40,000. It was over eighty dollars with the gloves, too, but just liners was $40,000. You want to comment on that? Absolutely. Thanks, John. Um, we started out by doing a waste audit management or waste audit, just like you, uh, you did with uh, Sarah's team. But you, you went out to the stores with a couple of our reps, Rick Ola and Mike Troller, and, and, and did the waste audit. Um, we then came back, just made our observations um, to them. We, you know, we, we, uh, we reduced their can size. They actually rolled out buying new cans, 32s and, and Slim Jims for their back of the house. 
<clears throat> and then they they implemented the SureFit system. Again, a forty thousand dollars savings alone just on on can liners. It's 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 been significant, and, and I think it's uh, it's a relevant point that uh, you know again we're pulling pulling dollars out of the out of the landfill and redirecting those into areas where they can use them to enhance the experience of their customers and their yeah. store. Yeah. And, and again, those dollars, we're going to be talking a little bit about helping you grow your register or your ticket sales at your register. You could be doing way better things than throwing your money away in a landfill. And I'm telling you, when you really put a pen and paper together on this and we uncover what you're doing, you'd be quite surprised. So Melissa, if our operators listening want to get started on realizing some real savings, uh, in this Jan Sand category, where do they start, Melissa? Well, it's super easy. They just need to reach out to their local Don rep. Uh, the Don reps are uh, completely able to do it on their own, and um, or they'll call us in and we'll help with the waste audits that we discussed. 